All right. Colossians 3 and 1. And it reads, If ye be then risen uh, with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So it starts off by uh, giving us instruction. If uh, we have been transformed, if our lives have been changed, if we have made the uh, declaration or proclamation that we're going to live for Christ, now uh, we're required to seek things uh, that come from above. Seek those things which are above, uh, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Uh, there, there is a, a pre-requirement for uh, living holy and receiving the blessings of holiness. You got to be seeking the things of God. You got to be uh, living a life that is according to the will. Um, and it, it has a lot to do with all of your aspirations, your personal desires. They got to be in alignment with the word of God. Verse 2 says, set your affect affections on things above. Now that's a powerful statement right there to set your affection, that, that word affection, that, that covers a lot of different kinds of ground uh, where, where your affection, that's a innermost feeling, that's something that is in depth um, uh, because you have certain desires that you had before you came to Christ that will not uh, coincide or will not blend with your new lifestyle that you are, are pressing toward. So now you have to set your affection on things above. You have to have a whole new mindset of how you're going to live your life, especially with young people today. Peer pressure is a thing that uh, a lot of people, young people and older people, uh, can't handle or unwilling to handle because, you know, that has to do with with your peers and the, thing, the people that you're going to be around. Uh, many times you have to even change your environment and change the people that you hang around. So you got to set your affections on things above because our lives is now here in Christ. We have a new agenda. We have a new outlook in our life. It says, um, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So um, that doesn't mean that you got to separate yourself totally from the earth of everything that's down here. You still got to go to work. You still got to go to school. You still got to uh, do the normal things that uh, life requires. But those things that deal with your affection that can twist you up and get you off track from following uh, the Lord, you got to change all of those things. You got to change that mindset. It says, um, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. Now, some people may ponder on that statement that you are dead. What is it talking about when it says you are dead? Anybody uh, can give me a brief answer. What is it talking about? This scripture is saying you are dead and your life is hid in Christ. How? Dead to the world. Dead to the world. Right. That's correct. Dead to the old activities. Dead to your old desires. Um, I believe uh, 2 Corinthians uh, uh, tell us that, um, if, uh, what it says, um, how does that scripture go? Um, let me go get it. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, I believe it is. If my memory serves me correctly. 2 Corinthians. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So if, if you are dead to Christ, you got to die to all those old things in your life. You got to die to that old activity, that old mindset. 
Uh, you got to die to your, your old friends, you know, because uh, uh, I know that sometimes you have friends that are very influential in your life. Uh, what they do, you want to do. I know I had some friends that as soon as I got with those guys, you know, my whole demeanor changed. Uh, and uh, it did not blend with my new lifestyle. I couldn't be around these guys because it, it causes something. It caused the old man to come back alive. Now, this scripture says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. So if it's hid in Christ, that means you got to hide away from a lot of things. You got to get out of the circle from a lot of things if you want to be productive. Now, uh, sometimes people don't choose to be productive, you know, in, in Christ. They get bored with living for the Lord. Uh, I, I've, I've seen that many times. People sometimes, they, uh, uh, they, they uh, stay saved for a little while. And because they haven't hid their life, because they haven't uh, uh, pulled away from a lot of the, the, the crowds and the bad influences uh, in life, uh, uh, they start to uh, grow back into that old lifestyle. And the very thing that push you to God uh, is waiting for you again. Uh, so, so you have to understand that if something happened to you to cause you to want to be saved, uh, if you go back to the old lifestyle, that very thing is going to be waiting for you again. It says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. We're in uh, Colossians, the third chapter. Verse number four. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, ye shall ye also appear with him in glory. Now, uh, some people may wonder about that uh, when Christ, who is our life, if he's not your life, you're not going to appear with him. You're not going to be able to reign with him. You're not going to be able to enjoy uh, the, the attributes of being saved. Um, I want to ask the class a question. Why did you get saved in the first place? Did anybody answer that for me? Why did you get saved? So you wanted to escape the wrath and the judgment of God, which that's good. Anybody else want uh, to? <laughs> you didn't want to go. You know. <laughs> that's a powerful enough reason. Yeah, hell is real, Sister Jane. You what? Sick and tired of being in sin. Exactly. You're sick and tired of being in sin. We're in Colossians, Colossians. Uh, chapter number three. Uh, and all of those are, are good, valid reasons uh, that, that, that we get saved, that we turn our life over to Christ and surrender our lives to him. Uh, you've got to be tired of sin. You've got to understand that Sin has a penalty. I believe Romans, um, is it chapter 3, 23? Let me go back and look at that. Because sometimes that uh, uh, we, we forget. Anybody got that? And what does it say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everybody needs to do what Colossians is telling you to do. Seek those things which are above because everybody was born in sin. Everybody was shaped in iniquity. Everybody has to give an account for sin. Now when you go over to Romans 6, and I believe the same uh, number. Romans deals with uh, sin very, very strongly. Uh, 6 and 23, Romans 6 and 23. Can somebody read that for me? 
What does it say? For the wages of sin is death. Wages of sin is death. Now, somebody tell me, what is a wage? Okay. Right, right. Now, if you got a job, what's your wage? What's your pay scale? That's what you get paid. So, so when when you talk about sin, you're talking about a work. Go over to Galatians five and uh, nineteen. Galatians five and nineteen. We, okay, so you're talking about works. Works means you get a wage for working. Now, uh, Galatians says that what? Read that. Now the, works of the flesh now the works of the flesh is going to start going through and telling you what some of the works of the flesh are, uh, some of the things that you've got to hide yourself away from, the things that you got to get out of, uh, the things you got to set your affections against. The works of the flesh are what? <clears throat> or manifest. Oh. Manifest mean what? Made known, revealed. So, so they're going to make uh, uh, you aware of some of the things that you have to get away from some of the things you have to pull away from, some of the things that you have to uh, be cautious of. See, this sin that we uh, are fighting is, is very easily accessible through the flesh. And Galatians is going to tell you a few things. We're going to read a little bit of that, and then we're going to come on back. It says, what? The works of the uh, flesh are made manifest, which are what? So it starts pointing out what they are. I'm just, I'm just going to uh, talk on a couple of them. I, you know, it's too many for me. It's too time consuming. Away from. That's a long list. How many things is it? Can somebody count that real? And we ain't going to even deal with the such like. What? Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is uh, dealing with a lot of lewdness, a lot of things that are, you know, just like that, like that dance you were talking about. That's a lascivious dance. <laughs> that's that's lasciviousness. What you were just talk, we were talking about a little bit earlier. Going down and. Get, that's the lascivious. It, it can fall in many, many other different ways, but that's just one way. So, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a cousin to being lewd. You know, a lot of little things. That, so, so, I didn't write the Bible. I didn't write all these things. I probably couldn't even think of all these things. So uh, you have to be led of the Spirit. Paul had to be instructed by the Holy Ghost to write all this stuff out because a lot of this stuff would get by us. And this is why a lot of people <clears throat> shy away from uh, living for the Lord because it's going to address a lot of those things. They're going to have to uh, do what this scripture says, uh, set your affections on things, that are above and not things on the earth. For we are dead. Folk don't want to die mm -hmm. to all those things. So the wages of sin, back over to Romans 6, 23, the wages, the payoff, you're going to get paid for all this stuff that you do. That's why we chose to get, to get saved, give our life to Christ, because the payoff is not going to be good. Somebody said they got saved because they didn't want to go to hell. <laughs> Somebody got saved because they didn't want to face the wrath of God. And that's a good reason. 
the life that you live now is temporary, but everybody that has lived is going to live eternally somewhere. That's why we need to uh, set our affections on things above, not on things of the earth, because the wages of sin is death. But the latter part of that scripture says what? But the gift, the gift is, is something that, a gift is something that you don't earn. It's something that is given to you. A free will gift. So most of the time, a gift is given because you favor somebody. You don't give nobody no gift you don't like that's been acting crazy and being mean. You ain't giving them no gift. Come on, somebody. But a gift is something that you give as an act of favor, an act of kindness. Uh, uh, so Christ says the gift of God is what? Eternal, eternal life. life. So if it's eternal life, it must be an eternal death. Come on, somebody. This is getting down to be very, very important, eternal life. That means that you can't even fathom in your mind eternity alone by itself. You know, that, that, you know, can you think of that? How long is it? How long is eternity? From now on, forever, and then the Bible reach back and get another one, and ever. That's a very, very long time. So, therefore, we ought to pay attention to what's going on in the world, especially now, so many things going on. There are so many distractions. You know, uh, me and my wife are sitting down looking at TV trying to enjoy a movie. And I'm just kind of getting upset with Netflix because they're just going overboard with the stuff they do. You, you know, the movies look like it's gonna be all right. And then all of a sudden they'll throw a uh, same sex activity in on you. You know, uh, two men hugging and kissing, or two ladies hugging and kissing, whatever. They, they want to desensitize you to that. But when you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, we're still talking about seeking those things that are above, setting your affection on things that are above. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, what does it say? In other words, he's saying, don't you know that the unrighteous, who are the unrighteous? The ones that have not uh, set their affections on things above. The ones that have not chose to live for the Lord. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Then it turns around and say some of the thing, same things that uh, we read over there uh, that you got to put off in, in Galatians uh, 5 and 19. Uh, Corinthians going to talk about some of those things too. What did he say? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Then what? Don't fool yourself. Neither what? Fornicators. Fornicators and adulterers, they, they sort of like twin cousins or whatever. They kin to one another. And in the world, they want to push that all the way to the side like it's nothing. That's why the world hates the word of God. They hate the Bible. They hate uh, to be disciplined or hate to be instructed. You know, when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden and Eve slipped away from her husband, was looking at the tree, and then the enemy came to her and began to converse with her. See, that's where a lot of problems come in. When you start conversing, when you start uh, adventuring, when you start looking into things, and you know, it, it pulls you away from what you should be focusing on. So she should have been paying attention to her husband. She was over there looking at the tree that she was commanded not to eat of. Then the enemy came in and interjected doubt. Did not he, God say that, that you could eat 
of the trees. What did he say to him? I don't want to have to go and get that. that I believe it's in the third chapter of Genesis. Hallelujah. Let's just get it just because we studying. And, and we don't want to be misguided because uh, this is a serious situation that we're dealing with. We're in the last days and things are unfolding so rapidly and quickly. And we don't want to get caught up and end up missing uh, uh, the mark with God. We're gonna, let's start with verse 1. Genesis 3 and verse 1. What does it say? No, no, Genesis 3 and verse 1. <laughs> now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So spirits can get into animals. Did y'all hear what I said? Mm -hmm. the demonical spirits can get into animals. Have you ever noticed like witches? They sometimes have been depicted that they turn into cats or, you know, and, and they, you know how they do all this stuff. Or get in a, 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 some kind of beast or whatever, turn into a wolf. You know, it's getting about that time right now, this uh, Halloween season. And folk dressing up like, like uh, ghosts and goblins witches and demons and goyos and so uh, it's sort of like a relationship let's read on and say now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made uh huh and he said unto the woman yea hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden so but God didn't say that he didn't tell them you can't eat of none of the trees. He told them the tree that was in the midst of the garden. So the enemy gonna always come and try to twist the word of God. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, ye shall not eat of it. Now notice God put it in the midst in the middle of the garden. So you might be passing by it often. You know, you pass by, you, you see sin all the time. You pass by it all the time, every day. It's in the midst of your life, but it's not in your life. So the tree was in the midst of the garden. <clears throat> you're gonna pass by it, you're gonna see it often. So you're gonna to have to make a decision every day. And somebody say amen. amen. You're gonna to have to make a decision every day of what you're gonna do. When you get up in the morning, sometime the devil gonna be stronger at you than he was the day before. Some days he, it's gonna seem like he ain't even bothered you at all. But some days that thing gonna come against you so strong and you're gonna to have to have your mind made up. This was one of those days with Eve. The serpent came to her, began to talk to her. <clears throat> when you start getting those questionable thoughts in your mind, it's best to shrug it off. It's best to, to, to think, think on something else. It's best to concentrate on other things. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You know what she should have did right there? <clears throat> she should have turned around and walked away. After she told the devil, cause she, she did something good right there. She, she kind of went and got the words of God and gave it back to the devil. But you keep on talking to him. He's smarter than you. Y'all hear me? Yeah. I said the devil is smarter than you. He knows what you like. Where y'all at? He was, he was hanging around with you before you got saved. So he know what you like. <laughs> so she should have turned around and walked away. But li listen to what happened next. 
And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So the devil always twists lies with truth. Because when they ate of it, they didn't die right then and there and fall and drop dead. But something happened. Verse number five. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we see he told another portion of the truth. Their eyes did come open. Because we're going to look and see what, what happened. Verse 6, and when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and the tree was designed to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, we see at work a scripture that came... Uh, over in the epistles of John, it says that all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. We see all of those things in this scripture uh, where she, she first she looked and she saw that the food was good, good for food, the lust of the eye, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and that the tree was desired to make one wise. So uh, the lust of the flesh, and lust of the eyes, and then being wise, that's pride of life. And the pride of life. Uh, so she did eat of that tree. Then all hell broke loose. Have you ever noticed that when you do something that uh, is against the will and knowledge of God, something he told you not to do, how after you do it, then all of the, the terrible feelings come on you. All of the, the repercussions come on you. All of the remorse comes on you after you have done what the Lord told you not to do. That's why we got to seek those things which are above. Don't go down that road. Don't go that way. You know, because it's not going to be any help to you to have uh, 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 that weightiness in your heart and in your spirit. The scripture says, and I'm still in Genesis, it says, verse 7, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. You know, most of the time, aprons just fit you in the front. So the backside still was out. Come on, give God praying. So the, the, some things you, you cover up portions but you need the blood of Christ to cover you all the way. Verse number eight, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So they heard the voice of God walking. I don't know how you hear a voice walking, but it must be a <laughs> powerful voice. They heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. So when you, when you do what you ought not to do, rather than your life being hid in Christ, you'll be like Adam and Eve, you'll be hiding from Christ. You're hiding from him rather than hiding in him. So they hid themselves uh, because they was afraid. Verse 9 says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now they was naked before they did it. Come on, give God praise. That's the spirit of innocence was on them. You know, just like a little baby. You can have a little baby, baby be crawling around butt neck, don't even know it, just doing whatever they're doing, climbing up on stuff. They ain't paying no attention because they innocent. You can have a little baby outside. The baby ain't always saying, 
they ain't gonna be trying to cover itself up because that spirit of innocence, that's how Adam and Eve were. They were so innocent that they were naked and didn't even know it. But when they ate of that tree of knowledge of good and evil, their eyes came open and they knew they was naked. That's why they made apron, all right? Let me move on a little bit further. Verse number 11 says, and he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee thou that thou should not eat? So that lets us know that's why we need to set our affections on things above, not on things of the earth, because you keep on uh, going into those areas and avenues. Now, since you know that the wages of sin is death, you don't want to keep on uh, uh, opening up that package. You don't want to keep on tampering with it. You don't want to, you, you know, like the little kid that's going into uh, uh, the uh, medicine cabinet or going where a lot of chemicals are. Back when I was a kid, if something was poison, it had a, a skull and crossbones on it. And that even frightened a kid. When they seen that skull and crossbone, they, they, they'd say, that, that looks spooky and scary. I ain't gonna mess with that. Well, we got the word of God that shows us sin is skull and crossbone to us. The wages of sin is death. All right, we're gonna stop right there and go back to our main topic because we're trying to get everybody to seek those things which are above, where Christ sitting on the right hand of God. All right, Colossians 3 and 4 says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall he also appear, we shall also appear with him in glory. Then it began to go up go on into the things that we already discussed. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Then it start naming a lot of those things. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscences, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So that's why we got saved to escape the wrath of God and it's, it's coming, it's, it's coming. And we want to be found in the safety zone. So the take home that I want you to remember in this lesson is from verse three. When you see verse three, try to think of all the things that we talked about today. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Try to think of everything that we discussed because it will help you to be able to withstand and resist the evil one that will try to get you to defect on God, try to get you to go back on God. Amen? All right, are, are there any questions or comments? Right. Right.